so Scott Walter, have you, do you even bother to watch television anymore, watch Netflix and stuff? I mean, being part of the Elon Musk fan club is it's enough entertainment all by itself. It's like, it's it, uh, unbelievable how much fun we have uh, doing this kind of stuff. And we've got some fun this morning, huh? Yeah, it's, it's like, it's it's hard to catch up to, to watch the other thing because there's all these other sources of news coming in and, and videos to look at. And, and yesterday, you know, um, Boston Dynamics released a video, uh, and again, this this is actually a Wednesday. This is actually Wednesday this time. Yeah, Wednesday, not, Wednesday. Yeah, it's yeah. not as faking it that it's <laughs> Tuesday, and then we're releasing it on I Wednesday. Can't. But is but basically, you know, yesterday, um, Boston Dynamics announced the the, the fact that they're, they're retiring um, Atlas, the their the humanoid bot, after like well over ten years, and you know, it's the, the end of an era, and um, you know, it looks like. You know, and, and they need a, they put out a really nice compilation of like all the uh, the fun moments of, of Atlas uh, over the years and, and what it was able to accomplish and, and all those things and kind of going down memory lane. But uh, well, let's let's take yeah. A look. So let's take yeah, a look let's go ahead bit. and take a look at, at what is and and, and remind everyone of the, the the Atlas bot and what is was able to do. So this is their um, their humanoid bot, which pretty much, you know, opened up that space, showed the possibilities of what could be done with a humanoid robotic form, you know, and, came and, and, directly and from the, the, yeah, the, from the DARPA challenge that, that goes back well over a decade. And it spawned a lot of other researchers, um, you know, people that went out, started their, their own companies. So it, I mean, really is the, you know, what, what, what is it they say? The, the, the OG, you know, and okay. definitely, you know, the, the grandfather of, of all the others, no, no doubt about it. And so, and a group and a group that like Tesla, they like to have fun. They really seem yes. to enjoy what they're doing over there. Uh, and, yes. it shows up, and it shows up in their videos. So yeah, yeah it shows up. And, and, and so are you able to share your screen? Oh, um, I uh, I I don't have the original. I thought you had oh. the OG. Do you have the OG? Oh, just a second. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can find that. Uh, find. find Okay, so light it up. Let's see what we got. Well, here. here's the farewell to Atlas. And so as you can see, it was quite a powerful humanoid bot. It was able, you know, famous for the parkour it was able to do. Probably one of the faster ones was out there. And um, yeah, definitely inspired a generation of roboticists to try to challenge this particular problem. And it had its falls, these nuts there. Um, and you know, some of the original forms that they had, uh, you can see different progress, learning to, to go on very challenging um, surfaces, balance testing, and we can see different varieties of that. And I think everyone remembers the first time it was like out there, it was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> like they're, they're walking out in the wild now. And uh, what they're they're able to lift, you can certainly see the, um, the balance that it has. Now, the one thing that it was missing was it didn't really have, have hands. Um, but it definitely had strength and it got that strength from the fact that it was hydraulic, as we can see there, you see that little leak. Ooh, another blowout. Oh, I mean, talk about an ACL tear there. Ooh, <laughs> that was quite the, you know, so you, it, it, it got the power from that. And that was sort of it's, it's downfall. And the reason right. why they used hydraulics is because at the time you were developing this stuff, you didn't have actuators that were powerful enough for that. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, everything is a convergence of technology and, um, you know, lots and lots of trial of error. Oh, that's, ooh, oh, yeah. yeah, that's. <laughs> it's guts all over the place. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it was able to accomplish really quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the fact it was hydraulically actuated meant it really was nothing more than a research tool and probably was not going to be uh, anything you would you would see in the household or in the factory. <laughs> and, and also, you, and also. You just feel sorry for these little guys. And yeah. it was, it was definitely time. I mean. Atlas definitely belongs in the museum. <laughs> and it was, and of course, the all museum is, this, yeah. but the museum is this, the Smithsonian. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't mean that in disrespect. I mean, no, it's, no. it's like that Atlas definitely has earned its place uh, in, in, you know, the, the hall of fame and robotics. And, you know, it's going to be one of those that you always kind of go back to and remember it inspired this next generation. Um, so yeah, it's rather, rather kind of a sad moment to uh, to realize that that it looks like 
Boston Dynamics has uh, thrown in the towel. Yeah, thrown you know, in the, the white flag when it comes to humanoid robotics, right, Randy? I mean, it's just well, like... they, they, you know, it was all hard coded, which is another thing that they needed to overcome. We do know that uh, the yeah. pre the CEO did uh, switch over to another company where he could devote himself to AI and to uh, yep. large learning models yeah. and, and but, large but, language you know, models, rather. One, uh, one thing is interesting is they showed a couple of other bots there, the Spot bot. Is, is Spot hydraulic? Oh, it's electric, isn't it? And then I think they also are showing like handle or stretch one of the others. I think that's an all electric robot. Do you think they know anything about building actuators or working with actuators? <laughs> Till we meet again, we meet Atlas. again, Atlas. <laughs> so is it the white flag? Or do you think they have another announcement that they're ready to break it? Anyway? Well, I don't know. This morning, I noticed something. I, I wasn't quite sure exactly. Oh, what's this guy? Sure enough, the next day, and, and the thing that's rather interesting, they, they chose the 17th of April. They could have waited two more days and waited till the 19th, which to any Bostonian is a very significant day. We actually get that day off, even if the rest of the country doesn't, because uh -huh. that was the start of what? 419. April 19th, 1775. You see, only people from New England... Yeah, and Massachusetts realized this is more important than the Fourth of July, Randy, because well, that pay, was the I'll day that more, Lexington and Concord. That was the day the American Revolution started. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. And that's why the Boston Marathon is run around that time. We get the Monday off, you know, but the nineteenth is the actual day. Well, today's I'll, the seventeenth, and I think I'll, it's because the idea of announcing this robot on the day that represents the start of a revolution <laughs> maybe is not appropriate. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, that's why they, they waited till today. They didn't want to upstage the Boston marathon there you go. on, on Monday. So on Tuesday, they announced the retirement and on Wednesday we see it's coming out. Now we've seen some indicators. You might remember last week, uh, oh no, it was about a month ago. They showed the old Atlas operating in kind of what looked like a, um, a factory setting. It was in their laboratory, but basically looking something that could be an automotive uh, where they were taking these struts, these engine struts, and hmm. taking them out of a bin and bring them over to um, a shelving area. Okay. And yeah. it was like the first time we saw Atlas had hands. Yeah. And these are the same hands. Okay. The three parallel grippers. Now, when we looked at it at that time, I said, wait, these hands are creepy because the hands are double jointed. Ah, yeah. Any one of those fingers could certainly serve as the thumb. Huh. And they could go in an opposite direction. It was like, ooh, already that was a little bit weird. Okay, so that means they're into being double jointed. And yes. as we will see, when we look here, the first indicator is like, wait a minute, those knees are pointing the wrong way. I don't know about you, Randy, when like I'm lying down <laughs> on the ground, my knees are pointing straight up. Yeah. So it's already an indicator that something's wrong here. Uh, and we are going to see that, that it kind of, kind of comes around. And I was like, well, wait a minute, which is <laughs> which is face up and which is face down? So that's already weird, but I don't know if I know any contortionist that could do this. Yeah, no kidding. That Flat. that is that is really <laughs> weird. And then using that to be able to kind of come up, and you see the head is able to spin around. So now the front is the back, and then it can kind of come here, and we can see it can do. Oh, it turns head around, exorcist style here. I know. And then decide to switch around. So. The, basically, the hips are in the same direction as they always were. They never change. Okay. But the torso and the legs are basically the knees have been able to flip around. Wow. So they've decided to extend the range of motion beyond that what humans are able to do. Uh, because that's what happens when you have uh, rotary joints. You're able wow. to do something like that. So um, at first, there's a little bit of Uncanny Valley. The My first impression was yes. when I saw that we're there is I thought right back to poltergeist, they're back. <laughs> and then I went to the exorcist when whoosh, the, the right. head kind of flipped around. And then there's a little this lost in space vibe, the new lost in space with like the round face to, of the head, but it's a friendly looking face. I think we, we could admit that. And um, they actually were trying their best to come up with a head that um, would not be threatening. Right. They, they really wanted to, to make it look friendly. So what are some of the first things you notice before we even see the movement? 
Yeah, it's um, it's it, it didn't it is not just another copy of all the rest. It is uh, mm -hmm. a little bulkier, um, in like its thighs. Uh, or, uh, there's it, there's uh, some similarities and other things. Like the first thing I noticed is like uh, all the venting they have around here, you know, oh, wow. around here, down there. Huh. You're going to see them in a, there's in a variety of different places because, you know, they're concerned about uh, heating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a certain amount of power requirements. The other thing is I noticed it seemed like they have almost all um, rotary actuators. Wow. It doesn't mean that they're not using these push pull rods for the actuation at individual joints, right. but the actual actuators themselves are all rotary. There's no linear actuators. Yeah, now, you want to keep your eye on over here in the back of this knee to get an idea because more than likely you've got a big actuator in here, which has a connecting rod that connects to that, which actuates the knee. So, so okay. that's how that's being done. What we're seeing a little bit of a hint there. We're also seeing that there's probably a couple of motors uh, embedded down in here that they need to keep cool that are going to be for the lower leg, going to be for the ankles. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on here in the hip, especially this unit here, which seems to be a nice combined unit. The elbow seems to be a fully uh, rotary elbow. Yeah. Uh, that's what it looks like to me. For And that means the elbow can probably be double jointed. I have to look a little bit closer, but I believe the actuation is that the elbow joint is the actuator. Whereas with the knee, the knee is not it's it's basically a, a, an idling knee, right? It's a it's a pin joint where the actuation is coming from up here. So I don't think they can double it, it, mechanically the way it's set up. You cannot have a um, a hyperextended knee. It just see. mechanically won't be possible. But they are able to achieve that trick with the fact that these actuators up here can spin back and forth plus or minus 180 degrees easily. I mean, in theory, they go to plus or minus um, uh, infinity. Except that if you are if you've got cabling going through here. I mean, that, that's the tricky part is, is, is how do you get your power and communication from here to there through a joint that's going to be wrapping up. So that's what limits whether it be plus or minus 180 or 360 or something like that is, is how you're able to to run the cabling through unless you come up with other clever contact points. But I, I don't think they're doing something <laughs> like that. Um, the the wrist design needs to be improved. Like that's not a real hand. And this yaw that you have up here is way back up here on the wrist where it shouldn't be because of the nature of the way they're doing it. So rather than combining those, this rotational axis and that rotational axis to be passing through each other, they've moved it back here, which means it's not quite like a normal human wrist. Okay. As far as capability, it's going to have a slightly different capability, but we're going to see up here, that's pretty much the same, uh, the, the, the shoulder joint. And that we're also going to pay a little bit of attention there and a bit of what's going on in the torso. Um, but then we can see what looks like this spotlight here. I mean, it almost looks like <laughs> it's something they took from a lighthouse as far as <laughs> what that thing must be. I have a reflector, so I think they have some cameras back in there. And so we go ahead and look at what's going to be going on. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see. Okay, so if we look right down here in the ankle. We're going to see the ankle is actuated almost the same way that the Tesla uh, bot ankle is, and that you you do have these connecting rods that go up and down. Um, but the servos are up here and then we can look here at what's going on in the torso when it starts to come up. I think we were able to see a little bit on the knee, how the knee is actually, there's no way that that's double jointed. Right. But notice this little angle that they have here in the pelvis. That's not, you know, the, this, um, servo here that's in there is not mounted horizontal to the ground, but tips down a little bit. No. Something I wanted to see. The first time I've seen that was PND Robotics out of uh, China has made their pelvis that way. And I think I did a, a, a thread about that on uh, saying how I kind of admired the fact that they kind of did it that way. Huh. The other thing we're going to notice is that these actuators here, because remember from the Tesla bot, we end up packing all those things. You know, or it's basically, it's, it's one actuator stacked on top of another actuator, right? right so right. it's two different motors that kind of come together to form this unit that's able to rotate in two degrees of freedom. Here, it looks like they decided to actually make an actuator that with two different axes that are coming out of it. So they made it more compact. And that's like hmm, something I like with their, their design and their approach there. Um, so that's that's a, a good way to go. And yeah, so I'm pretty sure that the elbow there is probably an actuator. So they, they could be double jointed, even though I'm not sure if we see it doing double jointedness on that right now. Yeah, the, sure. the shoulder is also not mounted horizontal, which is again, something I want. PND was like one of the first ones to show me. I think maybe the Tesla bot also has, that. it's hard to tell that the new gen two, the first one didn't, 
and that gets you away from this singularity problem that you have when your arm is stretched out, something what people call gimbal lock. So you can be horizontally out like this without a gimbal lock problem to get away from that. Right. They also offset this axis from the main axis coming out here, going through there, which is, again is a good move. PND did it. It just makes the arm more natural the, the way it is. It's It just makes the math a bit harder, but it's still solvable. So there's, so it's like, okay, I'm glad they did that. Cause that, there's a, a good mechanical reason to, to want to do that offset. So, so they definitely have, have made some, some nice improvements here and they decided there's some advantage to it. Now, one of the things I complained about with, when we looked at agility, when we looked at figure, uh, even to some extent, you know, Optimus is that they're really slow at pivoting. Right. So we saw them doing these tasks and it's like, my goodness, like all, all your cycle time is being lost in the fact that once you grab the box, it takes you forever to turn around and go the other way. Right. And is it something wrong with the design of the bots? Um, Nathan Peterman of, of Agility it says that it's not a power problem. It's just software at this point. It's just that, you know, keeping these things balanced is very difficult. I see. And we, we didn't see it in the previous video with, with Atlas. You know, they had the one where it was helping the worker by throwing this stuff. Out. It solved the 180 problem by literally jumping up in the air and spinning around. I mean, that was a clever way to do it, but that takes a lot of power. As you can see, they've solved it by pretty much rotating the whole thing. So, I mean, they really are kind of pivoting on a dime in a way. Right. So, and and because they have have all, all that, the ability to move the legs and stuff, they may be able to do that a lot quicker without actually having to walk turn your pivot. Just like, bam, you come around. So- that could give them a, a huge advantage on some walking speed because a lot of it's not just walking speed, it's pivot speed. Right. The pivot speed can be where you lose all your time. The other little thing I want you to see, like down here in the bottom of this torso, they're very much into rotary axes. And then you look in here, it's like, how does that torso actuate? Yeah. Well, a lot of the other companies that want to have full degrees of freedom in the torso, and this looks like they have three degrees of freedom there, unlike the Tesla bot, which has two, but it's partly it has two because it's redundancy that in many ways your, your hip axis can give you that forward lean that you want. Okay. Well, they want the forward lean to actually come from the torso and not down at the, at the, uh, at the hip. They also want it to be able to do this. And of course they want it to be able to spin around sure. completely, sure. which we can see. So down here in that pelvic girdle, which we can't see, um, they have probably the, um, the actuator to make this platform rotate. And then this platform, they have uh, this little joint here, which is this, this carden joint. And then they have, these little rods come down that depending upon whether they're moving together, if, if they move together, you're going to lean forward and back. And if they go opposite, you're going to get this. And then if you do a little bit of both, you can kind of get both of that kind of motions. In there. And, wow. and in order for those things to be actuated, you probably have the servos for that embedded right in around here somewhere in there, right along there. If you do it the way that we've seen these other robot manufacturers doing it, where they are basically stacking one joint after another, almost like the wrist that we see here. You know, if if you go back just a little bit, um, if we look at, oh, let me go right back to the very beginning here. You see how we have this axis here, and then we have that axis there, and then right. we have that axis there. Basically, this is how everyone else is building their torso. Oh, okay. they, you know, this gets connected to the hip, and this goes all the way up close to the neck. Uh -huh. And when you do that, that means half your torso is taken up by the spine, right? Yep. Half your torso is taken up by the spine. So in other words, when they, if they had a mechanism like that, they would, they would bring it up to about there. What happens when you bring that up to about there? You're asking me, right? What happened? So Scott, you're you're acting like maybe you think as the professor you've been able to actually teach me something, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, you're going to have to answer your own question. Okay, notice notice we have a lot of events in here and stuff like that. Um, basically, what it does it gives you a really big chest cavity. And oh. what would you do with a really big chest cavity? Maybe batteries. Batteries, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now the the others that are taking all the space claim up here, you'll notice they have. You know this this very nice triangular torso that any sort of superhero would want to have, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's way up here, and I'm looking at them. I was like, "Where do the batteries go?" Yeah. So 
um, that means I expect that they have a substantial size battery pack in here huh. that they will be able to get a substantial amount of runtime. And then again, you can see that there's obviously stuff packed in there yeah. um, because we, we can see also the venting that's going on there. The other thing is, is it looks to me is that there was actually uh, an interview that uh, the CEO, Robert Plater um, made probably yesterday, got released this morning along with it. So, so clearly oh. um, someone had a chance to, to preview it and interview him because like, wait a minute, there's no way someone could have seen that and, and get these, these quotes from him really well. And they, he talked about that they, um, wanted to come up with a friendly face and that part of the reasons for the head that they didn't have a head before. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, they were kind of like these little sensors and that, that you were seeing in, in Alice. So they, they have a real head and it rotates. And, and the reason they rotate is the same reason that Tesla has decided that James Dalma said, he said that there's no practical reason for it to rotate except for the socialization I see. to communicate what its intent is. Yeah. And so we know which is the front and the back of this thing for clear yeah. now. <laughs> right. Um, but I think it's a little bit more than that because when I look at that, it's like there's a lot of venting going on here. There's definitely um, uh, Uncle Martin's antenna here. Yeah. So they're able to do communication somehow with that. Right. So they they clearly have a lot of electronics in here that need some sort of cooling. And I suspect, I mean, I'm looking, it's like, where's the camera? <laughs> I don't you know. It's like, uh, where, where do they see anything? And it must be that they're hidden behind here because this is a shiny surface. So that that's probably... You know, a glass of some sort. So they might actually have the eyes there. And the question is whether they just want to illuminate the eyes or not. Uh, so uh, definitely, unlike some of the other bots we've seen, that they're literally, um, they're airheads. Right, right. <laughs> you know, they're there. The Unitree one has got something sticking up there. And you see there's nothing there. Um, the Apollo Aptronics, they intentionally made their head hollow where you see that it's hollow. So you know that there's nothing up nothing there. there. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. Um, now, I think they have only one axis here just to rotate back and forth. I don't think they have a tilt axis up and down. It's, it's hard to tell. I could be wrong because, it, it, but I haven't seen it do that movement. So there's nothing there that oh. indicates they could because it, it just the way it's kind of attached, you almost look like it could have it in there, but I don't think it does. I think it just has that, that one rotation. And the only reason you'd want to have it is again for socialization. So some of the other bot manufacturers like, like One X and Sanctuary, they have full three degrees of freedom in their head. And they say it's there for socialization. Got it. it. Like, it's just so much better to communicate that it can nod a particular way. It could do this and that. So again, it, they're all coming at it from a different point of view in, in the rationale on why they would want to do one thing or another. Here, you see a good example of how this axis, if you were to take this central axis and wrote, draw that right up, it doesn't uh -huh. go right to that center of rotation there. It's offset a little bit. Got it. So that's why that. Now, have we seen this waste somewhere before? The waste. <laughs> I don't know. Scott, you're always asking these questions. I have no clue. Okay. So basically, <laughs> never let a good design go to waste. Okay. Waste. Okay, waste. Okay, waste. Yes. Yes. Waste. Making a, a really bad yes, sad yes. joke there. Okay. Uh that is also in the figure bot. So the first time I saw a waste like that was in the figure box. Now huh. they may exist in some of these sci-fi movies. I mean, it's, it's quite possible you go back to some of them and you may end up seeing something like that. So it's, it's not like it's a brand new design. People have thought about these things for all kinds of mechanisms in the past, but this is, I think the second time I've seen it apply it. And I, th and again, my thesis is the reason they're doing that is it gives you a voluminous torso I see. cavity, I see. I see. which is, is very important as well as the flexibility that's, da that's down there. So, um, yeah, that's that's part of, uh, of the reason for that design. And I'm trying to think of, you know, anything else to, to kind of point out here. Oh, look at that number. <laughs> that's good. I like it. <laughs> Why do you like it? Well, it must be the very first one, right? Or do you yeah, it's the very first one. First one. Yeah. <laughs> but why the two double O's? Uh well, that would only, I, I, I mean, would they, would, <laughs> because they plan to make 999 of them? At least. Yes. Yeah. It, it, basically, they're saying we're not just making one. Right. We're not making a dozen of these things. They, they basically are, are, are already saying expect to see these in the hundreds. Yeah. Not so tomorrow, yeah. but that, that's the plan. Yeah. So my, my first impression, this looks, manufacturable um it doesn't mm -hmm. you know not uh, unlike some of the earlier obviously the atlas wasn't um mm -hmm. so do you feel like this looks 
more or less manufacturable than an Optimus? Um, no, I think the Optimus might be more manufacturable, uh -huh. a, a, a little bit easier. To, now, this is definitely a cleaned up design. I mean, it's like, where's the cables? So they, it's it's yeah. very advanced. This is not uh, you know, some company, their first attempt. It's like, oh, we'll worry about cleaning up later. They've done right. that. Again, look at all the venting that's here. You know, yeah. the vents there, the vents there, the little vents there. I mean, the little, little vents coming along here. So um, they're definitely concerned about airflow. Um, so this is probably close design. It's more manufacturable than Atlas for sure. Sure. Um, it's, you know, it might be on the same order. You know, it, it, it's not like to say that um, Optimus is like 10 times more manufacturable. Right. It right, might right. be that it's it's maybe 50% or, or 20% or something like that. It looks to me that, yeah, they would be able to, and they've talked about that, that they know that they need to learn design for manufacture. Yeah. yeah. Because that was one of the problems that they had with Atlas is they really couldn't churn out big numbers with them. Have and they would any, like to do that. Have you found any name, any kind of a name for this creature? I think it's just New Atlas. Okay, New Atlas. All right. Yeah. Our, yeah. yeah. Our Atlas yeah. Shrugged. I don't know. That's what I was going to say. I don't know if it's Atlas Shrugged, but it, it could be. You know. <laughs> it could it could almost shrug. Yeah. yeah. With all that double jointedness and everything going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it should be able to shrug. Well, actually, it can't shrug. No. no. It, do, it doesn't have a scapula. <laughs> right. You need the scapula to be able right. to shrug. So and then so this is so this is Atlas can't shrug. <laughs> Atlas can't shrug. <laughs> so your first impression of this vis-a-vis uh, -vis all of the other things that you've been looking at over the last few weeks, uh, I'll tell you my first impression was it was clever, very clever, very fun, very interesting. Uh, obviously, I don't have the the uh, chops that you do to think about it as for all of its capabilities. But what were your first impressions in terms of uh, uh, comparison with the others? Okay. First, I guess I wasn't surprised um, that, you know, the retirement video and there was kind of like a little hint at the back till we, till we meet again kind of thing. It's just like, okay, expect something to happen tomorrow. So it's right. like the first right. shoe drop, we're waiting for the second one. Right. Um, I wasn't sure about that video from a month ago where they, they showed the old Atlas lifting up those, um, those struts and then and moving them around. It just, it almost seemed like uh, a bit of desperation to still be relevant. Yeah. And <laughs> you couldn't tell it's like, Oh, with that in the retirement, maybe they finally like threw up their hands in there and said, oh, that's it. You know, we're, we're not going to do it. But I felt otherwise because they've already been playing with actuators with their other bots. Sure. And it, they weren't going to go down without a fight, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think that, you know, they've been taking the lumps, they've been taking the criticism and they've just been like keeping to themselves. Uh, and that's, there, there's some talented people and a lot of people that were at Boston Dynamics have left to go out to a lot of the other companies like yeah. Electronic and figure and stuff like that. And a lot of them keep talking about their mentors at, at Boston Dynamics and how much respect they have for all of them and stuff like that. So it's like, all right, they, you know, they're going to be coming up with something and they're just really good at keeping it, playing wow. it close to their vest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's like, okay, we're ready. And I've, I've felt like they got to have some kind of skunk works and they did it. Out of, I think it was like almost two years ago, they gave a presentation where they're talking a little bit about the future of robotics and they had like an image that looked an awful lot like a bot like this. Interesting. So they've probably been thinking about this design for a while. Uh, and un until they're ready to reveal it, they weren't going to say anything. Yeah. So do you think this one is uh, up to uh, the other things that are being shown right now, better than? different than in some way that makes it uh you know the, the, the hands are different so it tells me it's really meant for an industrial setting i got it and and that might have been what that video was like um a yep. month ago because it had these hands showing that's what it was be using and you know sort of demonstrating whether it would, would have that capability in an industrial setting and it may in many situations um be fine i'm not 100 percent sure how well it's going to be like picking up sheet metal parts or something like that and right, whether right. They, they need to come with something else but they, they may have some sort of application focus. Remember, they are owned by Hyundai. Yeah. So my expectation is that we will pretty soon start to see these things <laughs> uh, in their plants. In their plants, yes. And, and the other thing that's always kind of bothered me is that like two countries have just been really silent when it comes to humanoid bots. And it's Japan and Korea. Korea, yeah. And they, they both have a really good industrial robot yeah. base. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it may be that this is the Korean play Maybe. right here through yeah. Hyundai. Yeah. You know, if, even though it's like an American company, it's like, okay, this this is where they're going to be starting from. 
yeah. uh, uh, something like this. So yeah, I, I think it's meant for uh, being used in an industrial application right now. And it seems mostly capable, maybe super capable in some ways. And in some of those applications, it might be pretty good. Well, we, of course, what we don't know is what the cost is going to be. Sure. But the overall performance looks pretty good. I think the battery life will be pretty good. You know, it, it'll probably be better than most of them. Right. Um, it's what I don't know is, is they seem they said that this is actually stronger than the first Atlas, which kind of really? shocked me. Because yeah. wait a minute, that was hydraulic. Yeah. Um, you could have tuned it down. So it seems like, you know, they, they, they want something that's going to be pretty strong. So that will be interesting. But what comes with strength is power consumption. So um, that, you know, I don't know if it ha will have the same runtime as Optimus, but it might be more athletic than Optimus as far as, you know, if it has more power or more capability like that, that's, that's possible. Um, and then you just don't know what the, the runtime is going to be like. Have they said anything about the training, anything about the neural nets or how it's going to, how that's, that's what's interesting is, and that's the argument on why you want, don't want double jointedness is that when you do something like that, it's very hard to map to the human I body see. when you I try see. to do things telerobotically. So like the, the way it learned to, to stand up there, that wasn't from human training data that, that would have had to be done by maybe some sort of reinforcement learning with, with simulation or, uh, or some sort of heuristic. That's what I wonder is whether they kind of heuristically taught it or whether they kind of went through and had it kind of figured that out and come, come up with that. It could have been a combination of two that they, they gave it this and then let it run ahead. But I, I suspect some of those things might still be heuristic. Uh, we'll have to see. So they, they haven't said much about that. I think maybe they may not be that concerned about it because the concerns from most people right now is like, wow, the, the AI is like way ahead of the hardware. We need to come up with some piece in hardware. So that was probably the first thing that, that they wanted to focus on. Anything, anything on the weight? I haven't heard anything about the weight, but I have a feeling this thing's pretty heavy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. You know, it, it, it's probably lighter than the original um, Atlas. And I'll have to see, I haven't had time to, to see if there's a spec sheet out there to show the height because the original Atlas, I think was like four foot 11 and like 196 pounds. Okay. So it was a brute. It was yeah. Yeah. really yeah. heavy. Yeah. And, and this thing here is, this is not a lightweight. I mean, it, you've got a lot of batteries in there already. So you just see from the chest cavity, there's going to be quite a bit. Right. And those motors look to be pretty compact. So, um, yeah, it's it's not going to be light, which means it's not going to be in the home. It's, yeah. it's going to be more in the factory. It, it won't be in a setting that you are going to be having close interaction with humans in the event that it loses its balance. Right, right, right. And, of course, we have no idea. They could be working on three other things simultaneously for other mm -hmm. applications as well. Right. And, that could be, and that could be true for lots of companies, even for yes. Tesla. They could have... They could have uh, multiple uh, uh, different uh, products, completely different products, uh, in store for us because they did kind of mm -hmm. mention uh, that in one kind of a little tease at one point talked about products as opposed to a product. Yes. Um, yeah. So uh, all right, let's let's wrap it there then, Scott. Uh, we'll let this be all about the Boston Dynamics uh, product and. Um, any last thoughts about uh, this one? Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad to see them back in the game. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, uh, because again, it starts to show that this space is legitimate. That if they kind of like completely given up and then went over that, oh, we, we've got these new bots that we're doing, which are not humanoid form because we figured out this is how we're actually going to make money. And you're like, oh, wait a minute, the company that started out is not, is giving up on, on the humanoid bot format. Right. Because they, like you say, they do have these other products that they, they've been working on. Um, it would make you think that that's like, oh, maybe there is nothing there, but they've come back and they've, you know, I've been getting phone calls and off the hook here. <laughs> like, can you talk about it? So right, this will right. probably be like the, you know, the, the, first the second of at least five or six things, you know, interviews I'll be doing today because it's very, very important. Yeah. Um, that, that, you know, the, the OG, uh, is, is back. Right. And, <laughs> you know, ev everyone kind of likes one of those stories, right. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, the, the, the team that was the best thing kind of on hard times and now they're coming back. So no, this is good. It just legitimizes the space shows us that, um, the bots are coming. That's right. And, you know, th this has been one of the biggest things is that when Tesla came out with it, everyone said, Oh, it's just Elon being Elon. There's nothing there. 
<laughs> you know, you'll never see that and this and that. And I say, the more of these companies you see out there doing it, the more you know it's not just Elon's fantasy. And remember, some of those companies we've been tracking have been working on this way before the Tesla bot came out. So, um, and, and, you know, and, and of course that one being Boston Dynamics being kind of really the original. Right. And I almost wonder, is like, is Honda going to suddenly decide to resurrect Asimov? <laughs> because they canceled the program right at the wrong moment, you know, right when every, you know, the technology was starting to converge. So, so maybe they're having a second thought of like, hey, should we go back and. And again, yeah. and again, these could be being done in Skunk Works. Uh, there's, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of uh, interested right now that Tesla is uh, kind of gone quiet about Optimus for quite a while here. Um, after putting stuff up like uh, rapidly in succession, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. suspecting that maybe they're gone quiet on purpose. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. That, uh, who knows what their next move is going to be, but it's uh, it'll be interesting. I'm sure of that. All right, Scott. Thanks so much for coming on and talking to us about the resurrection of uh, the new Atlas. <laughs> yes, the new Atlas. Atlas that yes. doesn't shrug. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. And to all of you out there, thank you so much. And we'll be, and it's been great talking to you. Same here.